Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, OnPay. Without them, we could not be sharing these stories. Today on Atlanta Business Radio, we have an old friend, Joey Womack, with Goody Nation. Welcome, Joey. Hey, hey, how's it going? It is going great. I uh, hear there's some big news out in Goody Nation land. Can you share? Yeah, yeah. So we just announced a major partnership with Google for Startups. They have spun up the Black Founders Fund in which they are giving out and we are giving out five million dollars in non-dilutive capital to 76 amazing black led startups from across the country uh, with about 35 of those coming from Atlanta. So an amazing time for the overall Atlanta tech ecosystem, for the nationwide tech ecosystem. I'm really looking forward to what happens um, next. Now, um, that's super generous for Google to do this and especially being non-dilutive funding. Can you explain a little bit about why that's so important? Sure. Sure. So, so typically, um, you know, when it comes to funding of, 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 of tech startups, uh, they'll receive money in exchange for equity in their company, um, you know, 2%, 5%, 10%, whatever it is. And um, the interesting part is that for the most part, uh, diverse led startups will receive funding at about two levels lower than their counterparts. And oftentimes that leads to a number of other issues down the road. And so it just means it means for a weekend position for them. In this case, non-dilutive funding means that um, they don't have to give up any equity in their company. Um, it's essentially, it's, it's not a grant per se, but they don't have to give up anything. It's money they can use for the next hitting the next milestones or do whatever it, it takes. And they retain, they retain all ownership in their company. So now when this came about, how did you um, get involved with Google and how did you um, decide to collaborate in this manner? Sure. I mean, Google for Startups has been a great partner with us over, over the years started out as a sponsor for our hackathons for good, um, moved into a relationship for our social impact pre accelerator. And they've been just kind of observing the way in which we support both diverse led startups and social entrepreneurs here in Atlanta and across the country, particularly around the ways that we connect them to social capital. So it kind of made for natural, uh, a natural connection. It made, it made a little bit of sense for them to, to select us for this partnership. And then when you were, did you have any kind of say about the, like negotiating this? Hey, if you're going to do this, we recommend non-dilutive. Like how did that come about? Or were they saying, Hey, we have this idea and we'd like you to help execute it. Yeah. It's more of the former. And the, the great thing about this is uh, it has a deep connections to Atlanta. So Jewel Burke Solomon, who is the head for Google for startups here in the United States, but is based out of Atlanta is, is her, is her brainchild. And so she's been fighting for, non-dilutive funding for a while for, 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 for all founders in particular, blacks, black founders as well. And so um, it came about really because of, it started with COVID. Um, and then as we got into the summertime with some of the things going on around the country from a racial justice perspective, it really just kind of made sense. So it was, it was their idea. So now have you already chosen those 76 founders or is this still uh, coming up? Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've been selected already. Um, they were selected on a, on a number of criteria, their progress, but also their potential, how they can use the money and some interesting things around, uh, particularly the ones here in Atlanta that are what we call tech enabled companies. So you may see a few that are um, direct to consumer. They have physical products. They have a little bit more hardware, uh, but they have a lot of a lot of momentum behind them and, and some really interesting um, pivots to their business model that makes for a lot of great potential down the road. So they, they submitted some sort of an application and then you had to vet through, I would guess, lots and lots, more than 76 to get down to the 76? Exactly, exactly. So they were selected through a combination of uh, internal programs that Google was already operating, like the Atlanta Founders Academy, like the Black Founders Accelerator, as well as some other partners that Google has nationally, like Founders Gym, Black Founders Exchange, Capital Factory out of, out of Texas, and us as well. 
And then um, is the funds that are awarded, is it actually hard cash or is it like Google ads or credits or things like that? No, it's, it's hard cash. And so it's either uh, $50,000 or $100,000. So 24 companies got $100,000 in and the rest got uh, $50,000. And so in addition to that money itself, it, they also are supported um, by Google and also by, by us um, really indefinitely. And then what does that support look like? Is it coaching and consulting? Is it stuff? So at, at Goody Nation, we focus on the relationship gap for, for founders. So we're really good at connecting um, our founders to large companies for pilots and for partnerships to really talented professionals for uh, either endorsements, uh, key advisor roles or strategic advice in you know, various levels of or various areas of expertise uh, and also to investors and other funders. So not only do the, do the companies get that non-dilutive funding, but we also will support them um, with connections. And also we do mental health sessions for them called Founders Therapy, as well as professional development. Yeah, because it's kind of a lonely life as a, a yeah. startup uh, exactly. founder. Exactly. And then you can't really discount that because a lot of people don't focus on that side of it, but the mental health and the, you know, kind of the grit that it requires and the support system, it, it, it's really tricky out there for a person because they have to be a leader and they have to believe like your their people have to believe that they know what's ahead. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of folks are just making it up as they go along and you're doing the best you can with limited information. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You, you think you're the only one going through a situation, um, be it professional or personal, especially in a time like like the pandemic. Uh, but the reality is there are very few stories um, when it comes to entrepreneurs. We're just kind of all living the same one. We just think that we're the only one going through it. So now uh, let's talk about Goody Nation as a whole. Uh, talk about the mission of, of Goody Nation and uh, your goal, I know, is to help I don't know, millions, billion people um, kind of rise up uh, in a better situation than they're in now. How has that been progressing? And um, are you you still optimistic? Yeah, definitely optimistic, man. Yeah. So it's my personal goal to to help a billion people by the year 2039 um, from a from a goodie. And it's been going you know well over the years. We're only or I'm only six years into it. This was uh, early in 2014 when I came up with the goal. I do see what we're doing now at Goody Nation as a as a major inflection point to getting to that one billion number. Um, we see a world at Goody Nation where where every innovative company, quite honestly, has an official policy to donate hours of coaching, um, open up doors, and to provide other opportunities to some of the best social entrepreneurs and diverse founders. You know, quite honestly, around the world, and so. We're starting out by getting people to commit to doing those things, commit at least two hours of coaching or intros or opportunities. And what we're really looking to do is to build um, clusters, essentially, of, of awesome startups. So if we can do, you know, 10, 10 clusters really around the world, but particularly here in the U.S., starting in Atlanta, of helping 10 companies um, that are doing great work to get to 10 million users, um, we'll start to really get to that that one billion number. Now, are you seeing a kind of a mindset shift in, um, especially young people? I know you deal a lot with young people, but it, there was a time and maybe, I don't think it was that long ago, but there was a time when people thought like, I'm going to go and get a job and I'm going to work for somebody. And then that's my life. And now more and more people are kind of getting bitten by this entrepreneurial bug of I'm going to kind of create my own path here and I'm going to do something that I believe in. Are you, are you, are you kind of seeing more of that of young people? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you think about the world they grew up, they, they literally grow up in, in terms of having access to the world at their fingertips through a phone and also be able to control the, the, the messaging and content through apps like, you know, Instagram and now TikTok and, and Twitter and things of that nature. So they're, they, it is natural for them to go from idea to something tangible and get instant feedback on it. And so that at the end of the day is what entrepreneurship is, is about. Right. And so what you start to see is what we're starting to see is that people who are used to doing that, they can then build followings of individuals. And so when they actually have more tangible business ideas, those following that, that following can turn into real dollars for them. 
So whether it be, like I said, uh, Instagram followers or YouTube channels, you're seeing young people make make money at, I think, at a rate we've never seen before in this in this world. And to me, this is a major mindset shift in the in that I don't have to wait for someone to give me permission to do something. I can just do something. And especially if you marry that with your kind of network and connections and support, then really the sky's the limit at that point. They don't need anybody else. They have what it takes to really make a go at it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm 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 very uh, I'm really looking forward to to the future and what this next generation is is going to do. And I think it's so important that um, more folks open their mind to this possibility of choosing themselves and then, you know, trusting that they have an idea that's worth pursuing and then going for it because it has never been uh, more affordable to take that kind of risk. I think even if you started as some sort of a side hustle and test the waters, um, but I think it's, it's worth pursuing. Definitely. Definitely. It's, 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 it's in a great time to bet on yourself. There, there are tools at your disposal, like never before. Um, and even if people don't want to get into things like, you know, truly scalable technology that requires, you know, engineering talent and, and lots of money, you can use no code tools to spin up something in, in a matter of weeks. If we got a time, so, so quick story, yeah. We had a new, uh, we had, we had someone who was very proficient in, in no code, no code movement, um, speak to some of our founders, uh, last week. And this guy came in and, and, and broke down an app of one of our founders. And she spent over a year building this app. He used three off the shelf, no code tools and built and replicated that, that app in two days, which was crazy. Right. Crazy in, in, in a good way. And so I think that is the opportunity we have people choosing their own path. And now they have inexpensive tools to make things happen in a quick way leads to just amazing outcomes from a business perspective. It improves overall you know, morale for a community. And it doesn't really matter who you are and what you look like. Now, in this partnership with Google, is the uh, is the objective to create, you know, these unicorn companies, these billion dollar companies, or is it is the objective to create kind of lifestyle businesses that can help a person live a successful life that doesn't necessarily turn into this mega company that, you know, you're on the cover of magazines, but it's something that that individual or maybe their community is benefiting from. And they, they now have a lifestyle and a livelihood that's going to sustain them for a period of time. I think it's more in the middle. I mean, you're going to see some companies in there that are already a pathway to do some amazing things. You have zero storefront. You have four degrees um, out of Chicago. Um, there are a few in Atlanta, like uh, Aqua Genuity and Music Tech Works. Um, some may be on may, may go on to be acquired um, by larger tech companies. But then you are going to see a few companies that would turn into the quote unquote lifestyle businesses. They may go on to make five, $10 million a year, maybe $20 million a year, um, which is amazing for the, for the 99% of the, of of the, of the people in this world, quite honestly, Uh, if if not, if not more, but what I'm really excited about is their opportunity for all 76 to turn into the next generation of leaders that train the entrepreneurs that are coming in 20, you know, 2030 and, and, and beyond. So that's the real opportunity. Just imagine the possibilities of, of giving founders who traditionally haven't had the most opportunities, um, the funding they need to be successful. And just, you're just, you're going to see a lot of great, a a lot of great results um, coming out of it. Right. And I think it's important that it is a combination, like, cause the odds of a unicorn are, those are lottery ticket odds, you know, in a lot of cases, but the odds of somebody having a sustainable livelihood for the rest of their life and, and have security for themselves and their family and a lot of people in their community, that's a lot higher. And a lot of uh, these kind of programs, they're not really aiming at that, especially like you said, these, when it's a lot of these dilutive kind of initiatives, they're looking for a win and a better scale or else, you know, we're moving on and they don't, they stop caring really. They, you know, they're on to the next one and they're going for a home run after a home run, but something that's just trying to serve folks and helping them get a leg up and, and build the infrastructure they need to do 
to um, sustain themselves and their families. I mean, I think there's a place for that that shouldn't be ignored. Exactly. exactly. That is the real opportunity. When we, when we talk about entrepreneurship in America, I, that's I, I, I don't think it really matters what you look like. I mean, you start to take I think the, the, re, the real opportunity is taking the education that comes with, you know, the accelerators and those trying to turn into unicorns and applying that to traditional small businesses um, for for all is where we really can create a lot of impact um, in, the, in the business world. Right. And especially I think that it, it doesn't have to be a home run like singles and doubles are OK. You know, right. <laughs> like, right. Exactly. Exactly. You, exactly. Especially especially if you're a first time founder. Right. You I know? mean, look, manufacturing runs, it's a still, still the same run at the end of the day. You know, right. it doesn't have to be a towering home run, you know. Exactly. So you, you can get on base and you can steal a base and you can work your way around and still score. It still counts the same. Exactly. Exactly. And then, then you know what, even if you get a, even if you get stranded on second base after a double, so to speak, you still, you can still start, you can still, you still have another at bat. Right. right? Exactly. And, well, and now you know how to work the picture. I, I, that's, I, 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 that's what's kind of frustrating for me is seeing some of these kind of this venture capital mindset where it's a winner and out and it, it's not, there's, there's a lot in between a win and an out, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I think you're, you and I are on the same wavelength there. Well, congratulations on all the success. Um, so what do you need now? Is there, are you looking for a new cohort of folks to get involved with this or, um, are you just kind of letting people know this happened? What, what can we be doing for you? Yeah, no, uh, thank, thanks for asking. I mean, there, there's a few things. One, we are looking for amazing, um, founders to apply to our program. Uh, we admit people on, on a rolling basis and we put them in 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 the pipeline for other amazing opportunities like the Google for Startups initiative. Um, we're also looking for amazing professionals or just talented people to assist these founders, you know, whether it's with expert advice, whether it's with opportunities or even to open up doors. Because as we know, we said in a lot of different ways, whether it's your, you know, your your network, your net worth is your network, you know, it's not, you know, what you know is who you know, stuff like that. We're looking to develop really good relationships with founders. And also the reality for us as a entrepreneur support nonprofit, we um, we're looking for support as well so that we can continue this work to help make the world uh, a better and more sustainable place for us all. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for doing what you do, Joey. It's important work and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. So now what's the website if somebody wants to learn more? Uh, goodynation.org G-O-O-D-I-E nation.org All right, good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. And remember, this work would not be possible without the support of our sponsor, OnPay. Please support them so we can continue to share these important stories. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Oh, 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 oh,